today we're doing the field test for these Pintel brush pins. If you guys are not familiar with these brush pins, you should head on over to my Unbox and Swatch video. But the quick short TLDR is these are water reactive dye based inks, variety of colors, I think 18. And I'm sure you guys have seen the ubiquitous, here we go. This one is a pigment one. These are dye based, the gray ones are pigment ones. I'm sure you've seen these around. I'm sure you've even used these. Today, we're gonna try water coloring with them. So I have prepared here an adorable little sketch of Kara sitting underneath some cute flowers. First thing I wanna do is I want to create a background color. So I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of dye, that's probably even way too much, out onto my Fiskars craft mat. And then I'm gonna dilute that with water. And I have a distinct feeling these are gonna work like a, like a pre uh, mermaid marker. So these were out for several years before Jane Davenport released her mermaid markers. They are quite a bit more expensive at like approximately $10 each. And I got the 18 color set on Amazon. You can save a little bit of money by doing it that way. When I say a little, I really mean it's not a substantial saving, you're still paying a lot for these. So mermaid markers might be the way to go. But if you're used to inking with the Pentel brush pen, as many comic people are, this might be a better alternative for you. Oh man, I was hoping that was still wet so I could get like a nice, a nice diffusion of color. Oh well. And while you can often find these in stores and you can find them in various themed packs, I had the easiest time finding them on good old Amazon. Now, one of the little tricks I found for using these sort of water slash dye based watercolor-esque markers. They don't mark, they are, these are not marketed as watercolor markers. They aren't even marketed as markers, they're marketed as brush pens with dye-based ink. But I have found with these sorts of art supplies, if you're gonna do something that's very light in color, that should be the very first thing you do before you do any other layers. Grab a little more blue. I'll do, I wanna do the tops of her eyes. And I'm gonna hopefully absorb some of the excess liquid. And this was sketched in with a color eno. Sorry, thinking and also arting is hard for me sometimes. A color eno uh, soft pink. So I'm gonna grab this teal color and I am prop turquoise. And I am probably putting way too much on this craft sheet. Oh, gotta be careful not to get my hand in the still wet dye. Don't wanna do any mono prints. And like the mermaid markers, these are available in some really brilliant colors, in fact. If you like blues and greens, these might be even better than the old mermaid markers. You can also buy refill cartridges online or in stores. Look how much it's spidering in some areas. It's interesting. I'm doing this on Strathmore 400 series, their uh, field journal. So, it's not the best quality watercolor paper, but it's more than adequate for these sort of illustrations. I've also found it's easier, again, for these kinds of illustrations. If you've got a large area you want to fill to do that early, probably because a lot of water goes down and these inks are super reactive. This is the first time I've used them for watercolor. I'm gonna zoom in 
in for you guys in a moment so you guys can see, but it seems like they're very prone to spidering out. Okay, so I'll zoom in. You guys can really see where it's spidered out on her eyes. So I'm gonna give this plenty of time to dry before I move on to the next stage. All right, so while this dries, I'm gonna try to get all the blue out. What happens with these water brushes is when you expel the water, it will suck water back in so it can taint the, the color, like in the sponge inside or even the water in the brush. So sometimes it's helpful to go take it to the faucet and run it through there. I am going to, so I think what I'm gonna do with this, I've already kind of set the stage, but I think something really light, color bursty and fun is a good idea. And especially considering how the stuff spiders. Let me go ahead though and start with her skin tone. And this is light orange. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus more on painting the shadows than painting every th single thing. And that way we can get lots of optical bounce a lot of interplay between the color of the paper and we can blend out using clean water. So hopefully that'll have a happy result. Now, these are really water reactive, maybe even a little more so than the mermaid marker. So you want to try to avoid too much um, butting up of like your water with the last area you rendered basically. Even if it's fully dry, there's a good chance it's gonna reactivate and kind of soak in. So I'm gonna end up leaving a white edge, like a halo. And normally that's kind of frowned upon, but we're working within the limitations of this art supply. And I know this because I've worked with mermaid markers for, I've done a lot recently in fact, using mermaid markers, so I am already kind of prepared for the foibles that many of these dye-based brush pin markers have. And they can be a lot of fun to use, like once you kind of understand how they work, they can be a lot of fun. It's also a good idea to have a paper towel very handy and to work near or on a surface that you can use to blend your colors mix them with water, blend them out, mix them together to get the shade you want. Because direct applications tend to be way too saturated and heavy handed because these are some really intense colors. Just gonna tighten that up just a little bit and then let it dry. But you guys can already see it starts to spider out. And I'll pull in. So I want something that's kind of light, vibrant, and refreshing. So that's kind of what I'm going for so far. So you guys have kind of an idea of how I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. You can also allow these inks to evaporate and get really like intense, dense color but like with the, or I mean, you, this could go either way. This could be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, like with mermaid markers or like peerless. So any dye-based watercolor basically, like with any other dye-based watercolor, um, if you apply water, ooh, that's gonna make a mess. Easy to clean up, but a lot of, a lot of ink went down. Okay, we're gonna apply some brown. And we're gonna do the center of the cone flower and I'm gonna hopefully be able to show you guys another technique. So we're doing the cone flower, right? If we want wet into wet saturated color, we can take the same marker. Kinda dip that color where we want it. And then we're gonna let it dry and I'm gonna show you guys another technique with that. 
So, and I'm gonna lift this up so you guys can see. It is feathered out pretty significantly. Now I'm gonna show you guys a trick. For this trick, it needs to be dry. Nah, that's still damp to the touch. Not bone dry, but it does need to be dry because you're gonna be putting a paper towel on it. So, these are water reactive dyes, right? That means, and I'm probably gonna regret doing this because I actually like how it turned out. You apply some just clean water, nothing special. And you can lift it back off. Not all the way back off, but pretty, pretty significant. Now, since these are also water reactive dyes, you kind of want to avoid putting your hand directly on the paper, especially where there's been ink or dye placed because your hands sweat, and your hands have oils, can cause the paint to reactivate. I'm gonna grab some purple. Oh, another thing about these dyes is they tend to be very staining. So somebody made a comment about my dirty, my dirty craft mat, and my dirty desk, which it is dirty, but my craft mat is definitely stained, even though it's fairly new. And that is because I've been using a lot of these sort of staining dyes directly on my mat. So I'm using a watered down purple, actually called purple, I thought it would have. That's something I like about these is they have like very normal color names, nothing, nothing fancy like purple kiss or 80s eyeshadow or glam rock, nothing like that but just colors that most people would be able to immediately identify as that color. And I'm doing painting a cone flower and I did do some adjacent, which is what I said I was gonna try not to do. So I do need to be more careful. And I actually intend to ink this after I finished. So that'll also help tighten this up. I have an inking technique that I've developed when using these uh, brush markers, I will use them as like spot color for some of my more kidlit doodles. So it's a technique that came from, from that. And then let's grab some concentrated color. And those areas I lifted up reabsorbed the color that I put adjacent to them. And now they're as dark as they were, which is fine, but you guys, I hope we'll be able to remember that technique. Gosh, the colors are so vibrant. It feels really fresh so far, which I really appreciate. And you're gonna go through a lot of water doing these sort of things. I mean, I pretty much drained the water brush on this. So, next one I wanna do is orange. And you don't actually need to squeeze out the, um, you don't need to drip the ink onto the mat. That's kind of a waste. You should be able to get plenty of ink. And if you can't, you know, you can always apply more. It's better than just wasting it, which is what I'm doing. That's why I'm pointing it out. Don't be like me, guys. And you guys can see these are still spidering out. I'm gonna have to try these on another paper. I've kind of modified how I'm applying color to, if not take advantage of the spidering, at least, not be negatively affected too much by the spidering, but I wonder if this is gonna happen on other papers. So it's something I'm gonna have to test in the future and get back to you guys. And these can also be used interchangeably with mermaid markers. So if you have some of these, in fact, the red one is actually very popular for people to use for like little spot color illustrations. So you can find plenty of examples of that. And you can definitely find some examples on Instagram. Pick up some of that excess water. Do a little bit of wet into wet. But I couldn't tell you why these are spidering out the way they are. So I wanna, that's something I wanna figure out and solve so I can either change my paper or just always use these for very specific styles. That cone flower looks really nice. Very pop. I'm gonna use a little bit of 
the darker orange and I'm going to touch in some areas so we get some blending but I'm going to leave lots of white so we still have lots of great contrast. Oh, and these markers put down a lot. Like not only are they very saturated, but they put down a lot of color, like a lot of liquid. So they will stay wet for a while on your paper. So you have a long active blending time. Just going in with a little bit of red. This is the red I was telling you guys about that's fairly popular for spot color. Pretty pleased with how this is going so far. I'm gonna grab a little bit of pink and then I'm gonna need to refill my water brush. So these are supposed to be asters, but I kind of am limited as to the colors I have. I have 18, but they're some of them are a little weird. So I'm gonna use pink on them. kind of scoping it out, looking at it, checking for contrast. There's some areas that I can go back in with the teal and kind of tighten those up because um, it's just kind of left blank, but I can do that later. With the pink, I'm gonna dab in a little wet in the wet. Those dry quick. I thought they were gonna stay open a little longer. Then we can even use yellow. Blend some of these colors. And of course you wanna clean your brush after you do that. So I'm gonna give these a little bit of time to dry and I'm gonna go refill my water brush. Okay, so I'm gonna let the flowers dry a little bit and I'm gonna do some work on Kara. So we already checked out the dark brown. This is just regular old brown. And rather than directly applying it, I'm gonna use the water brush and try to show some discretion. I should say though that I have a cat on my lap. And as you guys probably know, that makes doing anything difficult. So the Jean Davenport water brushes are just super leaky. I'm being kind of stubborn, dri drippy, drippy would be the better word. Being kind of stubborn by using it because I try to make do with what I own. I'm also dabbing it off, off screen onto a paper towel because since these are so, so bleedy, in fact, it's starting to bleed out a bit already, which is disappointing. Um, since these are so bleedy, you want to try to be light handed with the water because using more water seems to make it seems to exasperate the problem. Exacerbate, there we go. So, I'm probably not going to be happy with that. It's already, oh wow, it's already really feathering out a lot. How frustrating. Okay, so we need something cute and fun for her outfit. Got some blues. So we'll start with just regular blue. No fancy name. Clean out my brush a little bit, get some of that brown out. Try to do this light. Oh, look at that. Look how much it bled. Oh, it basically ruined her face. I don't know if I can even salvage that. Let me zoom in. That's horrific. Look at that. That's terrible. Oh, I was really liking this. Oh, and it doesn't want to lift. Man, I don't know what to do about that. I mean, I guess I can like fake it and drag her bang over. It's so frustrating. These would be probably great then for florals because you can be kind of loose. But for something tight, 
like a face, you'd have to work a lot bigger than this. Oh well, that's the risk you run doing field tests is you often ruin things you like. But we'll see, sometimes I can salvage things. Just trying to be so careful with how much water I put down too. I just wasn't careful enough. So in the past, um, people have told me that in my reviews I'm too negative. And legit, in a situation like this where I was excited about something and it like completely backfires, how would you prefer I respond? I'm really curious. I know what some artists will do, and this is no shade, it's their channel, their choice. Uh, some artists will do a voiceover and time lapse through all the mistakes and ugly phase and kind of not comment too much on it. Or they'll be like, yeah, I messed this up, but I was able to fix it. Um, and I like, if that's like your personal art on your channel, that's one thing. But like, I feel like for a review, that's not informative. So I don't know that I would change my review style, but I am interested in hearing what people actually expect because that was that's I mean now that I've kind of figured out how to fix it it doesn't look so bad because I can kind of see a solution but it's dealing with that is just really sad and frustrating and it makes you want to quit working on what you're working on and I know with younger or less experienced artists, artists it goes a step further than that where they're just like well I'm terrible at art oh well I give up kind of mentality and I don't want you guys to ever feel that way that's why I review art supplies because I want you guys to be able to find stuff that'll work for you not not that these even claim these are these are labeled as brush pens they make no claim at being able to use them as watercolor markers. I should definitely say that. So it's not on the company. They made no promises. This is me. Uh, I saw that these were very similar to the Jane Davenport markers. I was like, oh, let me use these like I have used the Jane Davenport markers. So this isn't on Pentel. This is on me, the artist, for a weird use, probably. Someone who... is more familiar with these is probably like, why are you using them like that? You know better, you're a comic artist. I said these could be amazing for brush letters if it weren't for the fact that when you add water, they bleed everywhere. Or maybe that's just on this paper. And see, I'm just going to try and carry on with the rest of this, like that never happened. And I'll see if I can't salvage it. It's so, it's so hard when like something like that goes catastrophically wrong, especially on a face, especially on a face. You can salvage a lot, but a face is hard to fix because um, our eyes are naturally geared to find recognizable features and if something looks weird that kind of messes with it so faces are one of those things where I can oh out claws in my <laughs> gee whiz um I can fix a lot of things but if I mess up on the face it's going to be noticeable and I'm always kind of disappointed when that happens this cat's gearing up to claw me again he's like laying all lazy on my lap. He's about to fall off again. But other than her face, everything's looking okay. Everything's within parameters. The flowers and leaves are looking, I think, particularly nice, especially because I already know, I already have plans on how I'm gonna tighten this. So having a cat claw up my hip is certainly not part of my grand plan at floral painting. 
I was also kind of hoping that the pink lead would be more activated because in the videos I've done this technique with like mermaid markers um, or alcohol markers, the lead tends to get activated and mixed in and I really like that effect. That's why I went with pink. So I'm a little disappointed that it doesn't work like that with these. But that's good to know. One day when I find the time or the money to do the giant cross compatibility resource, it'll be a note for that. Okay, I think I overworked her hair. I think that's part of the problem. And I can blame Mr. Bowie, who won't even speak up for hopping into my lap and distracting me. That's exactly who I can blame. When you guys goof on your channels or in your art, who do you like to blame? I think blaming the cat is always like an excellent option. A lot of artists, a lot of crafters, a lot of creative people have cats, so. A lot of people understand that. See, it's looking really cute, except for her face where it's like bled, 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 bled. Bleed, bleed, bleed. So, other than for inking, because I know that's a common use for these water marker or dye based brush pens, dye based brush pens. What do you guys like to use the Pentel brush pens for? I'm gonna kick this cat off my lap. He cannot behave. Let me know in the comments. Feel free to post a link if YouTube will let you do that. I don't know if YouTube will let you do that. I know when I stream, uh, only mods can post links. So I usually have to look stuff up and then link it for people. Cause I mean, I try to offer plenty of opportunities for people to share their own work. I like seeing other people's stuff. All right, so doing a teal, let's see. Up here, doing the teal, doing the teal. Teal is actually a really nice idea. Now, I need to do dirt. So some brown, I'm gonna use the same brown that I used in the cone flower. Really, I'm about to have to dump this cat though. He is not making this easy. And I know there's three people watching this who are like, no, don't dump the kitty. And I also know one of my friends who's watching this is like, do it. He deserves it. Kick him off your lap. It's not cute anymore when he claws you up. One day, since I talk about him so often, I'll do a whole video where I I don't know, I draw something really cute and cat related and I just tell Bowie stories. And that way he can earn his keep, right Bo? He won't answer. I was like during the stream, he slept the whole time, which was surprising because I thought he would be getting into everything. But then as soon as the stream ended, he was very awake and very tearing all of the things up. And that stream went on till like 11. So like for those of you who are like, oh, but he's a cat and cats are nocturnal. It's like, that was a long stream. Anyway, I'm kind of just staying on like familiar grounds here. Since I've messed up her face, taking a very minor risk. Okay, it's looking other than that face. Looking pretty good. Do a little bit of wet into wet. I think I'll let things dry and then tighten them up. Okay, so wet, wet. But you know, I just can't leave well enough alone because it's bothering me. Let's try 
to clean it up a little bit just using a direct marker application. I really just want to indicate now that that is where the bang is now because it really bothers me that it bled out like that. And I did plan, I did intend, I still do intend on doing some direct marker app, well, brush pen marker, what have you, application. I just didn't expect for it to be kind of triage. But all that said, I really hope you guys are seeing whatever you need to see about these markers, whether or not you see that happen and you're like, that's fine, it doesn't matter, my style works around that. Or if you're like, okay, I'd wanted some watercolor markers for drawing faces, that's clearly not gonna work. These are kind of expensive for watercolor markers anyway, at least here in the US. that's a little better. I'll go in and do her eyes and her eyebrows later, but that was just gonna bother me so much. If you couldn't tell, it was already bothering me. It was gonna drive me bonkers. So. Normally, I make myself wait to finish corrections until the very end. You guys have seen that in many videos, but I just didn't have it in me. There's more grains than this available. I may not use them all today, but there's a dark green and there's an olive green. And this is the light green that I've been using and you guys can see you can get a lot of range with the light green. And when I'm applying wet into wet, like this with a direct application, I'm squeezing the barrel. I don't know if that's apparent so that I can force some of the ink out because otherwise it wants to suck up some of the water from the page. So I'm doing a little wet over dry application here with the orange. I'll adjust the camera in a second. And there isn't like a blue purple. There's just this red violet purple. So we'll see if it'll layer well or I think it will. I think we're still gonna get, we're gonna be able to get contrast out of it. Which is what I care about. I don't really care about the clean, cleaning up the lines or anything like that. So what do you guys think of these since you've been watching the video? But kind of a nice third person or second person really perspective. What do you think of these? Do they seem like a good fit for you or do they seem like they're full of frustration? Do you think you'd be able to get the kind of art you want accomplished with these? I actually really like them for a lot of other uses. So fortunately, this is not the only way I use these markers. Oh, Peach, you are so leaky. You love the temperature of my hand and you get grippy. I keep dabbing it off on my uh, my paper towel, so otherwise it would start dripping all over the place. So if you're following along at home, kind of noodling about, what I would recommend for this is that from this point, we let it dry for at least overnight. We wanna. I recommend we let it dry overnight before we ink it um, because I have found that these take a really long time to dry, especially with a direct application. So we wanna give it 
plenty of time. And when I use it for my little spot color illustrations, I usually let it dry overnight before I ink it. It's sad. Go in. I'm not even gonna do her freckles because it's just been such a challenge. So this is where I will leave you guys tonight. I will see you guys tomorrow and hopefully we can get this finished up. I say that and then I'm like, oh no, you should go directly and with the indigo. They're all drippy though, my hands must be very hot. I'm sorry, steel blue, not indigo, steel blue. There we go. So I will see you guys tomorrow. It will be same day your time, but you know how that goes. I'm letting you guys know this so that you can, if you're doing this yourselves, maybe pause the video if you wanna work along with me or I don't know. I just want, I have a need for you to know that time is passing so that if you decide to replicate this, you can leave, you can allow for that. So see you guys tomorrow. All right guys, so this has had a chance to dry overnight. I'm going to proceed to ink it. I've got three inking utensils. They're all waterproof. And part of the reason I'm going with this is I am a little concerned that if I use something that was water um, reactive over these water reactive dyes, there might be some strange interplay or strange bleeding. I have had the best results using waterproof like the, well, I've used the Sailor Mitsuo Ida, but like this Sailor Rio Fuka, which is sort of like the re, the new model. Or like the Pigma pens by Sakura of America, or even like the Pintel pigment brush pen, which is not water soluble once you've let it cure fully. So I've got a protective cover sheet here because since these are so water reactive, if I have any sweat or grease on my hand, I am afraid that it'll kind of reactivate the inks and either transfer onto my hand and then get printed as I move my hand around the page or we'll just smear the inks on the page themselves. So as you guys can probably see, there's a lot of fuzzy, a lot of bleeding out, which you won't really get this problem with mermaid markers. And I'm gonna test in a smaller controlled fashion, I'm gonna test this out on other papers to see if maybe it's just the Strathmore 400 series field test paper that does this. But again, Pintel doesn't market these as watercolor markers, at least not. I haven't seen them marketed as such. I've never encountered that sort of branding. And when I go to like Michael's, they're sold with the inking supplies in the art supply section. So, you know, this is definitely not really the intended use, at least as far as I've seen. And if you guys have seen otherwise, please send it in. Uh, I'd be curious to see kind of the promo art, honestly, and to see if it reflects some of the issues I've had or if they managed to find a paper it works on or what. And you really can't see too much of the ink on that one. I'm sure. As I progress, it'll be more noticeable, like on this orange flower here.
after inking, it did sort of come together a little bit more, especially her face. There's always something about, you know, light but tight inks that can kind of salvage a lot of um, bleeding, a lot of chaos. I still don't think these water, these markers, these brush pins are really ideal for watercolor use. You can probably use them for like watercolor sketches in your sketchbook, um, one color watercolor sketches. I actually have a few examples of those. I may have even recorded a video of me doing that. Um, but really what I think these are best for, what I like using these for are one color spot illustrations or two. So this is actually fountain pen ink. This is not, but it's similar to this. I really liked how this one turned out in fact. Or like this, which is the two greens and I still need to ink it. Actually, I might have to grab a different sketchbook to show you, I'll be right back. So this little cutie was done using the Pintel Red and I also used Pintel Red Lead to draw her. Same goes for this one. I also like to use different fountain pinnings. So I have more examples of that apparently than I have of the Pentel. But as you guys can see, it's really cute for single color illustrations. If you're looking for something that will work well for a watercolor effect, the Kuretake Clean Color Real Brush are actually really great for this. You can use them very blended out like watercolor or you can use them very saturated like a marker. And it's very similar, sketched in with um, a Pentel, no, no, I'm sorry, a Pilot Color you know, in pink, um, water brush, direct application, and then inked. And I have this tutorial here on this channel so you guys can check that out as well. So there are markers that are definitely more suited to using for watercolor on watercolor paper and watercolor sketchbook where you don't get the bleeding, the feathering problems that I noticed I got from these. Now I love the vibrant colors, but again, there are other brands where you can get a lot of vibrant colors. So I hope this was helpful, useful, and informative to you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching me work on this and watching me problem solve. And I look forward to seeing you guys again in another field test, field test slash tutorial. Um, I do actually, before I totally say goodbye, I actually want to do a little bit of demonstration. <laughs> So I've got here my Canton Mixed Media because we did talk about testing to see whether or not these would bleed all over the place on other papers. And since I've got you guys, I might as well test for that. So the materials we're going to need for that are a water brush. I seem to put that away. And I've also got a spritzer bottle. I also want to demonstrate for you guys some of the really nice blend into blend effects or rather color into color blending we can get with these. So I'll start with that. We're going to start with light orange, direct application, very juicy, a lot of, lot of liquid going down on the paper. That's what makes these very blendy. Then we're going to go with brown and then we're going to go with sepia. So you get a decent blend with very little effort. Pink. And the red is a little bit too warm to really work well with that. So we'll go with purple. And then we'll go with this blue. So these could be excellent, excellent, excellent brush pins for hand letters who enjoy doing brush calligraphy, want those blendy effects. My brush calligraphy is just terrible, but I'll demonstrate. Because they stay wet for a little bit longer, you can get some really nice blends. And I love the dry brush, to be honest, because it has that sort of hand of the artist look, it shows that it's not just a computer generated font. I mean, you can do that with computers, but it always reads as more like a real human 
physically drew it on the paper. And then down here, we'll do a little bit. And working this large is definitely consuming a lot of ink. So that's something you wanna keep in mind. But look, you can even blend on the paper. Just be careful to get all that out of your brush. You don't wanna ruin your brush and pollute your colors trying to grab a variety of colors that maybe didn't make it into that field test. And I love how quick they blend on the page. Then we're going to, these are very water reactive, so I'm just gonna cover that a little bit. I'm gonna use the spritzer bottle. So if you're just trying to create like a quick, sort of cheap watercolor effect background for something else like a card or something, since they're so water reactive and so juicy, you can really get a nice reaction. And then I tried this, I think, with the Daniel Smith sticks. Let's try sprinkling, sprinkling some salt into this. Let's see if this will react to salt. And then of course we have to let that dry fully. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Now I don't want this to take all evening, which it will. So I'm just get, going to go ahead and check in with you guys and show you that the salt does have a very interesting reaction, especially in some of these areas where we have multiple colors blending. The colors that they'll push out versus the colors that they'll kind of retain makes for a really interesting effect. The last thing I kind of want to demonstrate is utilizes the brush pen. So we're going to go way up here where I have space again. And I mentioned this several times. I do think it continually bears repeating. I'm finding that a lot of these uh, brush pins that utilize a dye-based ink tend to become very drippy as your hand heats up. And this is a commonly known problem in the fountain pen community that there's some inks that just get really drippy if you have hot hands. So I'm pointing this out because it's not necessarily commonly known in the art communities or in like crafting communities. Maybe you want that. Maybe you want a super juicy application. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want to be able to better control how much ink, how much water is going down on your page. Maybe you don't want to deal with the super long dry times. So I always think that kind of information is good to disclose, good to know. Now, before I entirely say goodbye to you guys this evening, I'm just gonna grab another swatch book because this one's wet. I'm also going to grab my mermaid markers. Do a little bit of switcheroo. That's why it's good to have multiple swatch books. Allows me to work faster. So let's do some side-by-side -side swatching comparison. Now, the Pentel has 18 colors. The basic set of mermaid markers comes with 12. There are two additional six color sets plus one four color set with sparkles in it. And you guys have seen me talk about all sets but one on this channel. So how do I wanna do this? Cause I have 18 colors and I wanna be able to do side-by-side -side comparisons. And I don't have a lot of room. So we're gonna start by doing swatches of the Pentel brush pens. And these do come with official replacement refills. You basically buy the back of the brush. Whereas the Jane Davenport, you can disassemble them and you can refill them, but there are no official refills available at this time. I did think when I purchased these incredible inks, that they were used to refill the mermaid markers. And then I opened it and this was before she changed the packaging to talk about how they're very scented. And I found the scents for the four colors I bought to just be horribly nauseating. So you can refill your mermaid markers with those. Um, I'm not. Can I, I don't think I can fit all 18 and I should have been pickier about what colors I put down. Because there aren't good analogs. And that's kind of what I'm trying to demonstrate, at least with the 12 color set. <laughs> Just go ahead and put the colors I think have analogs in this set 
next to the colors I no don't. Hmm. See, Reef is kind of somewhere between these two. I'll actually be a little clever. Double up there. There's two greens. Mm. Still running into spatial problems. Oh well. We'll figure it out. Okay, so I'm gonna have to label these because I need to be able to keep track of what's what. All right, so Pentel has a P. Let's go through these. And then after I've swatched these, I'll label them with an M or an MM. And we'll see how many. I don't want to say duplicate cover colors, but similar colors. We'll see how many similar colors we end up with. And these are already very, very juicy. They do dry a little bit faster, I've noticed. Maybe they don't have as much glycerin in them. I don't really, I don't really know. But these are very prone to being drippy do this one in a couple places because I thought it would be more orange. It's actually more like their yellow. And then they have like three pinks. And I have a few videos on the mermaid markers as well. If watching the side by side swatch Parison has made you curious. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and label the mermaid markers now. And fear not, I will scan this chart and it will be included in the blog post where I talk about these wonderful little brush pens. But I hope I provided enough information for you guys to be able to make your decision. The only thing left for me to share is the current cost for these 18 Pentel brush pens. Currently on Amazon, you can get the 18 color set imported um, for $84 from Japan House and fulfilled by Amazon. And that is with Prime, so that includes shipping. And it's all the same bright colors that we talked about, the same size brush tip. I know Pintel um, sometimes does medium and large brush pen tips, but this is same as the, what we have here. And then let's see how much the refills cost. Individually on Amazon, these go for like $9.99, $10.99, so around $10, give or take. I'm currently on the Pentel of America site right now and I am not seeing anything about the refills. I have seen the refills in stores, but it's been a couple years, so they may have taken them off the market. You can refill them very similarly to how you would refill these with the ink of your choice, that it, as long as it's dye base, you could use fountain pen ink, you could use like, honestly, the diamine flowers inks, almost identical in colors to these. Um, you could use the PH Martin's radiant watercolors, any sort of dye base ink. If you clean this out, then you can refill it with that or you can try to color match it. That's up to you whether it's worth it to you to refill it. It would probably be a little, if you could find good, if you care about the colors and you can find a good color match, it would be a lot cheaper probably than buying these refills because if you're buying fountain pen ink, for example, and you're just getting kind of standard stuff, not, not slamming diamine, but like diamine is a good kind of middle of the road, uh, decent performer, comes in some really vivid colors. You can get these depending on where you get them for less than $10 a bottle. So you could refill it with these. I've actually been looking into liquid ink, liquid dyes for art, and I'm having a lot of trouble actually finding what I'm looking for. I know Dynaflow is an acrylic dye. I'm not looking for acrylic. I want something that's gonna stay water reactive because if you put acrylic in this, it's gonna dry out over time. It's gonna ruin your brush pen. Same goes for fountain pens. I know some people are like, yeah, you can put acrylic ink in your fountain pens. And it's like, no way to ruin it. I mean, if you don't mind disposing of your pen after or performing serious triage, same would go for this. And another tip before I say goodbye, if you use rubbing alcohol with these, for whatever reason, 
the nylon bristles are gonna get eaten away by the rubbing alcohol. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope this was helpful, informative, and inspiring for you guys. And I look forward to seeing you again in the future. If you love watercolor, please check out my watercolor basic series. It's full of reviews like this here on the channel and over at natasoup.blogspot.com. And if you like my art, please check out my Instagram at instagram.com slash natosoup and my beautiful webcomic, which is free to read, 7inchcara at 7inchcara.com and 7inchcara.tumblr.com. Have a great day, guys. Bye.